Today, we illuminate the art of lighting, that essential ingredient for visual storytelling. The main goal of cinematic lighting is to tell a story. That's the key takeaway of this video. Whether improving photography, drawing, filmmaking or any artistic pursuit, mastered lighting transforms amateur work into professional polish. As said in my previous video on environment artists, lighting can be sometimes part of the job. This video shares my lighting research so we can level up our skills together. Okay, let's quickly overview some theory. It's obviously very subjective, but for me, what makes good lighting is having an intention, like directing the eye of the viewer to a certain point in the composition, setting mood, adding depth, or strategic shadows serving the story. We'll simplify lighting into two types, natural and artificial light. Among natural lighting, we can also summarize it into two categories, direct light and indirect lighting or overcast. Direct lighting is, for example, the sun in a clear sky or the moonlight. For example, in the movie The Revenant, you can notice that the sunlight is strong and don't decrease depending on the distance. Also creates hard shadows. Notice the shadows are partially tainted with the color of the sky. These shadows will change over time, of course, due to the sun rotation that will change the visible color perceived in your eyes. Because the closer the sun is to the horizon, the more layers of the atmosphere for the color to pass through before reaching your eyes. And the more blue will be dispersed, leaving room for visible shades of red and orange. I'm leaving color temperatures and documentation on the subject in the description in case you want to recreate sunlight in your work. Overcast lighting is the opposite. It diffuses sunlight into soft, low contrast glows. No harsh shadows slicing the scene. The light will bounce everywhere, offering little contrast to your image. Okay, let's now have a look at artificial lighting. To simplify them, we can make two main categories. The first one is fire and candle, that I don't really consider natural lighting because their placement is intentional. These are weak light sources creating harsh shadows that are generally orangey lights and contrast with the blue of the night. The intensity of their light decreases with distance. I'm also leaving the color temperature in Kelvin in the description in case you want to match the color of the lights. The second category of artificial lighting is light bulbs. There's no point in detailing everything here because let's face it, if you're passionate about light bulbs, you're someone really surprising. But remember that there are mainly three types of bulbs, incandescent, fluorescent, and LED. I'll also leave you the documentation if you want to learn a little bit more about the subject. So let's recap. What to remember from all this theory? First, natural light illumination have an infinite range while artificial lights have fall off. Two, the shadows created by the lights can be diffuse or hard. Three, for artificial lights, a larger light source generally softens shadows. And number four, the closer the subject is to the light source, the stronger the brightness will be on the subject. Now for the practical side, First, the most important thing when you want to place light on your work is to ask yourself a few questions. What do you want to convey? What's your intention? What is the subject? Is your light interior, exterior, natural, artificial or both? Where should your main light be? Where should your shadows be? Should I add more lights in addition to the, my main light? Should my lighting be in frame or out of frame? And finally, what color to use? To help yourself answer these questions, here are some lighting ideas that may inspire you. Amongst the most well-known, there is Rembrandt lighting, referring to the painter of the same name, which can be seen in many films or fashion shoots. Easily achievable with the light at 45 degrees from the subject to create this triangle shape on the opposite side of the subject. We can also mention three-point lighting, very practical when you want to present a product with a main lighting at 45 degrees. A fill light to soften the shadows and another light of 45 behind the subject, opposite the main light. 
These are just two examples among so many possibilities and I'll put a few more examples of classic lighting setup in the description. To finish, I wanted to cover the principles of high and low key lighting. Low key lighting corresponds to very low brightness, very strong and hard shadows. The shadows take up the majority of the composition in your image. High key is the opposite. If you studied art, you must have been told that you need to properly expose your shots in that. By extension, these types of lighting are mistakes. It's a nonsense. Because the only thing that matters is your intention. <clears throat> what the fuck did happen? Never mind, what you have to remember for this video is overexposing or underexposing. Putting your subject in the shadow, seeing 10 different lights. If all that serves the story you want to convey through your drawing, photo, anything, then I don't see why it would be a mistake. Only your intention matters. That was a lot of theory, but in an upcoming video we will focus on practice. How to choose color. All the lighting artifact to achieve a more cinematic look. In the meantime, take the time to observe the lighting around you. And in any cases, do not worry. With hard work and dedication, you will find success in your passion, regardless of natural talents or expensive degrees. So stay f motivated.